Welcome back friends. Today I want to take a look at a utility in the Spring Boot CLI for encoding passwords. This came up because I've been working on a bunch of Spring Security demos and I wanted the ability to show that you shouldn't be storing plain text passwords in anything. So a lot of my demos have the users, passwords, and rules uh, stored, whether it be just in a, a CSV file somewhere or a database. And I wanted to make sure that good practice was not to store plain text passwords. So whenever I want to do that, I end up uh, creating a little script that I need to go ahead and run to uh, encode the password so that uh, I can have it, um, so I can store it in, a, in say a file. And so I was doing this manually and I didn't realize that the Spring Boot CLI has a really great utility for doing this. So I want to show you, I want to walk you through a project, uh, show you how the uh, encode password utility works and actually use it in a little spring security demo. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on in. Before we get started, if you're new to the channel, head over to danvega.dev and learn a little bit about me. Uh, one thing you'll find is I have a lot of articles on different topics, one of which is Spring Boot, and I also have some courses. So if you head over to courses, uh, you can find some different courses that I have. Uh, two of my more popular courses, Learn Spring Boot and Getting Started with Spring Boot 2. So if you want to learn more, head over to danvega.dev and be sure to sign up for my newsletter and stay up to date with everything that I'm working on. With that, let's jump into today's tutorial. So what I'm going to do is create a new Spring Boot project. Uh, this is going to be a pretty basic project. We're going to create a web project with Spring Security and we'll take a look at an example of Spring Security and like storing a password in plain text. And then we'll go ahead and encode it and store that same encoded password in our properties file. Uh, so I'm gonna be using IntelliJ today. The Ultimate Edition has the built-in Spring Initializer, but there's no reason you can't just head over to start.spring.io and use the Spring Initializer there. Everything we're gonna do is pretty simple. Um, so everything you need to do in Spring Boot, period, can be done from the Spring Initializer on start.spring.io. So I'm gonna create a new project. And we're gonna go ahead and choose the Spring Initializer. I'm actually going to choose Java 14. You can choose whatever version you like for this. It's not gonna matter. So I'm going to say dev.danvega is the group. We'll say spring security demo is the artifact and everything looks good. I'm going to hit next. So I'm going to choose for my dependencies. Uh, so again, if you're new to Spring Boot, uh, I have a bunch of different videos on using the Spring Initializer and really kickstarting your application. Uh, but for those of you who are new around here, uh, the the uh, dependencies are basically the uh, things that you're going to need that you're going to depend on in your project. So what we're building today is a web application that is going to have security. So these are the things that we're going to choose when we're creating our project. So I'm going to select web, so spring web. I'm also going to come down to security and I'm going to choose spring security. And I also like the dev tools, uh, gives you some really um, uh, great tools as a developer, things like uh, automatic restarts, live reload, and some configurations based on um, no understanding that you're in development mode. So let's go ahead and select those, and that should be enough. I'm gonna hit next. I'm going to store this in a folder called boot, and that should get us going. And we're gonna go ahead and create that folder. All right, so the first thing that I wanna do here is go ahead and open up the palm.xml and just kinda of show you what the Spring Initializer brought in as far as dependencies go. So we declared that we wanted to create a web project and use security, so we get these starters right out of the box. And these starters include all the other dependencies that we might need. So we don't have this long list of dependencies in our main palm.xml and we don't have to like figure out what versions of different libraries work with each other. So these starters are really handy. We also have dev tools and we have a couple of uh, dependencies that we didn't opt into but we get with any kind of uh, Spring Boot project. The one is the testing support. Uh, we don't, we aren't actually going to write any tests today 
but it doesn't matter. This is only a test scope anyway dependency, so it would only be included when we're running tests. The other one is the Spring Security test. So when we opt into Spring Security, we get the Spring Security test um, dependency as well. So that's it for the POM. Uh, another thing I like to do before I actually try and add anything to this application is make sure that this app runs. I wanna make sure that what I'm writing is not screwing anything up. So I wanna make sure that this works first and then we'll go ahead and add our own code in. So if we go ahead and run this, uh, we're gonna see something here in the console and you're gonna see something here using generated security password and then this random password. So when we go ahead and say that we're going to use Spring Security, uh, some auto configuration kicks in and Spring Boot tries to set up some sensible defaults for your application. What it does is it locks down everything by default and you have to explicitly allow uh, particular users or roles to access to say your REST API endpoints. And this is a pretty good approach because it's much easier to lock everything down and just open up what you want um, as opposed to opening everything you up you want uh, open and trying to just lock down the things you want secure. So this is a, generally a good approach to security. What it, uh, what, uh, what it did by default though is give us a user with a username of user and a password of this randomly generated password. So if we need to access something, those are the credentials that we're gonna use. Right now, we don't have any endpoints for the user to access. So what I wanna do is create an endpoint and we'll take a look at that username and password in action. So I'm gonna create a new Java class. We're gonna call this the hello controller. And inside of here, this is just gonna be a rest controller and we're gonna create a new get mapping. So this is basically going to be to the root. Uh, this is the same as saying this. And I'm gonna go ahead and return a string. We'll call this method hello. And we're just gonna return hello world. Okay, so now if we go ahead and save this, we are going to update this. Uh, we're adding a controller here. We're, we're creating a new endpoint. I'm gonna just restart the application here and we're gonna get a new password. So anytime the application starts, it kind of generates a new password for us. And so obviously this isn't something we're going to use in production, but it is nice that it's just like right out of the box for us. So I'm gonna head over to the web browser now and go to localhost 8080. And by default, you'll see that we automatically get this login form. So we didn't have to do anything. This is something Spring Security provides to us out of the box. If we go ahead and type in an invalid password, we're going to get some bad credentials. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in user and then paste in that randomly generated password. I'm gonna hit enter and now I have access to that endpoint. So that's a great start with Spring Security. Now something else you can do is we can come into resources, application.properties, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go spring.security.username dot uh, user. So dot user, let's go spring security dot user. This would really help if I did this right. Dot user dot name. So you could see um, the little hint that came up by default, the username is user. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to Dan. And then I'm also going to change the uh, user's password to password. So I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna go ahead and restart this. I don't know why my dev tools didn't kick in, but um, that's for another day. It's usually an IntelliJ configuration issue, but. Now you see that we don't have that randomly generated password show up in our console. And that's because we've told Spring Boot that, hey, uh, I don't need that random username and password. I'm gonna provide my own. So now the username is Dan and password. So if we go back over here and refresh, um, we probably need to get rid of that cookie. 
Let's go ahead and go into here. Here's our session ID. I'm going to delete that. Now it's going to ask us for a new one. So now I'm going to type in Dan and password, and that's going to let us in. So I'm going to delete that again because we're going to change that. So now, as I said from the beginning of this tutorial, one thing that I do, so you, again, you probably use this single username and password when you're just kind of getting started. At some point, you're going to move to, uh, whether it's a file or a DB, somewhere to store these credentials, right? And you don't want to store these credentials in plain text. So even starting with just this single username and password, I like to kind of show good practices and good practice would be not to store this password in plain text. So I want to store the uh, single password in its encoded version. And to do that, as I said from the beginning, I would usually write a script that would do this for me. And again, it would use like bcrypt, it would encode the password, and I get this password back and I could go ahead and use that in my text file. But I never knew where this script was. I have it on different machines. It was just a kind of a pain. I was pleased to find out that the Spring Boot CLI has this feature right in the command line interface. So you can easily just bring up a terminal and encode a password. So I'm going to hop over to the web again and take a look at this. If you're not sure what the Spring Boot CLI is, I will leave a, a link to the documentation below. It's a little command line utility that you can use to whether it's kickstart applications, run simple applications. Um, there are a bunch of utilities in here that are really nice, and one of which is the encode password. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up terminal. Okay, and again, you can do this from anywhere that you have the Spring Boot CLI installed. So I'm gonna check my version by going spring dash dash version. And you can see that I have Spring CLI v2.3.0 installed. If you go back to the documentation and you want to get it, if you don't have it installed, one of the easiest ways to get it installed is by using something called SDK Man, a really great utility for managing uh, multiple versions of multiple uh, CLIs or applications. Uh, it's a really great utility and I highly recommend it. So now that I know that I have the Spring CLI installed, I'm going to go ahead and type Spring Help. And if we look through here, it's going to give you a bunch of options. Here are the available commands. You can run, grab, jar, war, init, and then encode password. So this is pretty cool. So now what I can do is I'm going to say Spring encode password. And now you're going to provide the password that you want to encode. So I'm going to say password one, two, three, four. I'm going to hit enter and it's going to give us this encoded password here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Now I can replace my plain text password with the encoded version of that. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Come back to my run. I'm going to restart this. And everything started okay. I'm gonna head back to the web browser and I'm gonna go ahead and refresh this. It's gonna ask for a username and password. So my username is still Dan. Now my password is password1234. And then we enter and there you go. So now it's comparing the encoded password versus the encoded password, uh, which is really nice. So again, um, not a huge um, issue if you're just kind of working locally and you're test, you know, running some demos. But I, again, I like to shy on the side of uh, showing best practices whenever possible. And obviously, it's a, a best practice not to ever store plain text passwords. So you can use this for demo purposes. You can use this for, you know, seeding a, a database full of some sample data. Um, it's really great. I mean, in a production application, you're not going to be doing this because you're going to be uh, inserting users into a database and that uh, creation process would create the password. Um, but again, just a really handy utility uh, that I found useful in the Spring Boot CLI and I wanted to share with you. So hopefully uh, you learned something new today. And if you did find value in this video, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, friends, happy coding. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go.